Hey, welcome back to Kentucky Route Zero. My name is Dr. Knott. Let's get back into it. So truthfully, it's been about a week since I played this. Um, so you may have noticed if you're watching this in real time or close to it, that it took a few days off that I wasn't supposed to. But no worries, we're back into it. Here and there along the Echo. So this is an intermission type thing between Act 3, which we finished last time, and Act 4. So let's see what this is about. Some of these take a while, these intermissions. Some of them were pretty short. The entertainment was pretty long. Limits and demonstrations pretty short. So I don't know. I don't know what to expect. Here and there along the Echo. We'll play this intermission in its entirety. 270-301-5797. I assume we're going to have to make this phone call. Drop it. Put on speaker. Oh, that's loud. Two seven zero three zero one five seven nine seven. I wonder if I could hang up. Oh, the Bureau of Secret Tourism, the BST. For a menu of our resources, press 1. If you have an extension to dial, press 9. For more information about our organization, press 3. If you don't remember dialing this number at all, press 5. To hear these options again, press 0. I want to press 5, let's get the menu. For historical sites along the Echo River, press 1. For a guide to the river's flora and fauna, press 2. For help identifying an unfamiliar sound, press 3. If you're holding a snake right now, press 4. <laughs> to hear these options again, press 0. Well, if you're dialed into this here informational resource, then you're a certain kind of beachcombing, bat-calling sightseer. So let's take a driftwood inventory. For a diver's guide to underwater islands, press one for forgotten places press two for restless places press three for what little we know of the iron pariah press four for food and drink recommendations press five to return to the main menu press six to hear these options again press zero this might take a while. I want to listen to everything, but Perhaps a lot of options. Perhaps it's the violent displacement of natural gases. Perhaps the river tilts to face the moon, slowly changing the angle of its surface over time. Some sailors blame corked rocks. Whatever the geological explanation, the islands of the Echo River are mostly transient, rising and diving on some inscrutable schedule. The following islands are presently underwater. The Green Island, island number 8192. The entire 7 plus or minus 2 islands archipelago. New Konigsberg, rock of magnets. Island of trivia, Nelson's Island. The Beasley Keys, Rock of Boredom, Water Tree Keys. This list is current as of now. <laughs> For a diver's guide to underwater islands, press 1. 
Okay, that's what we'd press. For forgotten places, press two. For secret tourism, forgotten places are the vital spark. Take no pictures here, nor souvenirs. Write no travel logs. We will discuss these places now in vague and qualified descriptions. <laughs> For the town with no roads to it, press one. For the silo of late reflections, press two. For the monument to something that we don't remember what it is, press three. There's something about his voice that makes me want to close my eyes and I... For the town with no roads oh. to it, press, press one. Okay, fine. But it's just like, the there's something like that makes me super happy and kind of dizzy two. about listening to this. Like, it's weird. There is a town which has its own roads, but which no other roads connect to. They send and receive mail. There is a school, and so on. But what I want to tell you about now is the horses. There are horses living wild in this town. I forget how they got there. They don't stay in stalls. They sleep outside. They walk through the town on the streets or on the sidewalks. And the people of the town think of them as elegant, wordless neighbors. For a diver's guide to underwater islands, press one. For forgotten places, so it's gonna be hard to remember press two. what's a press, but I think we're in two. Tourism, forgotten places are the vital spark. But there's something like Take it's no so nonsensical here, listening to him talk, right and if you actually try to comprehend what he's saying, it's like so fantastical that it makes absolutely no sense. Um, so this place before it could have been an island, For the town right? With no this one. To it, press one. Yeah, town with no roads to it, island. For the silo of late reflections. Press two. All right, two. There is a silo so tall and strange that it can take years for an echoing word to bounce from bottom to top and then bottom again. If you wait patiently, you may overhear the conversations of earlier visitors. I once had an argument there with a dear friend, but I forget what it was about, and we haven't spoken since. Maybe I'll go find out someday. For a diver's guide <laughs> to underwater islands. That's right, two. For secret and tourism, three, I believe. Forgotten places are the vital spark. Take no pictures here, nor souvenirs. Write no travel logs. We will discuss these places now in vague and qualified descriptions. Yeah, I think we're at three. I just want to make For sure that. town with no roads to it. There's not a one. four. It might be the last one. For the silo of late reflections, press two. For the monument to something that we don't remember what it is, press three. Yeah, okay. I suppose it must have been an important event if we felt we needed to commemorate it. The monument looks like it was a lot of work to put together. I wonder if it was a happy occasion, something we were celebrating and didn't want to let go of, or if instead it was something so horrible that we never wanted to forget it for fear that we'd accidentally do it again. There isn't a plaque or anything. I guess we didn't think we'd need one. For a diver's guide hmm. to underwater islands, press one. For forgotten places, press two. For restless places, press three. All right, restless For places. For the cluttered place, press one. For the flooding place, press two. For a list of the places where people can't sleep, press three. All right. There is a place always cluttered by debris floating along the water. Otherwise, it's unremarkable. In fact, the only way to find it is to notice that there happens to be more trash there than anywhere else around. I wonder why that is. For a diver's okay. guide, <laughs> for the cluttered place, press one. For the flooding 
place. Press 2. There is a place that regularly floods. I first saw this place years ago when an acquaintance of mine, an artist, built an installation there. The work was very complicated. All of her artwork is. I remember it was made from huge piles of recycled newspapers. Unfortunately, she wasn't able to complete it before the flood came and wiped it out. The next time I passed by this place, it was full of young men and women on bicycles. They built a track weaving through the soggy ruins of my acquaintance's flooded artwork. The rising water level quickly made it too dangerous to ride in anymore, and many bicycles were crashed and abandoned. The last time I saw the place, it had been repurposed to store handmade pottery earmarked for sale out of state. By the time I arrived, there was just a pile of ceramic fragments dashed by floodwaters against rusting bicycles and gray pulp. I've heard recently that this place has been reclaimed again. Surely this time, things will be different. For a diver's guide to... For the cluttered place, press 1. For the flooding place... Press 2. For a list of the places where people can't sleep. Press 3. E. People can't sleep in the wet grass or on the bridges of New Konigsberg. They can't sleep anywhere near Lake Letha because it's too large. Why is this guy getting so loud? Nobody can sleep with their toes in the river because it's too cold. People can't sleep where I sleep because I'm all knees and elbows and anyway, there isn't enough room for both of us. I'm not sure if anyone can sleep on the deck of the Mucky Mammoth, but I'm certain they can't sleep on the trash barge because of the smell. If you have anything to add, please call us back with extension 7360. For a diver's guide to underwater islands, press 1. For forgotten places, press 2. For restless places, press 3. Okay, we're back here. For what little we know of the Iron Pariah, press 4. 4. The Iron Pariah is just what she's called along the Echo River. Of course, she once had another name, but it's been scratched away, maybe out of shame? Or maybe she took a bend too sharply and left her true name on a rock. So, what else? We know she was in the war, but neither side would claim her. We don't know if anyone's aboard. She drifts along the water and commands a wide berth. Tourists... If you hope to document the Iron Pariah, I fear you will be disappointed. She has a beguiling way of vanishing from photographs. Steer to shore and let her be carried along in silence. Pilgrims, I wouldn't dare to interfere. For a diver's guide hmm. to underwater islands, I mean, press one. What does any of this actually mean? Places, you know? I think we're on five, and then six will bring For us what back. We know of the iron pariah. Pariah. For food and drink recommendations, press five. All right. For food, press one. Oh my God. <laughs> For drink, press two. To return to the main menu, press five. Five. If you plan your journey along the Echo to be a slow and thoughtful one, you will surely want to eat. It's true, and even advanced preparation can still fail you. Maybe the food you packed will fall in the water and be spoiled. Or it could be stolen by a bat. Well, the water 
sustains all travelers. Catch it yourself in the river, or have something prepared for you at uh, uh, this place out on the lake. Um, the restaurant is called, uh, well, it's out on Lake Letha. It has to be out there where the water is deepest. If you go early in the morning, you might see the diver bring in his nightly haul. Weird creatures from weird depths, fish, crabs, jellies, things we don't have proper names for at this elevation. Sam and Ida's, that's the name of it. Sam dives, Ida cooks. Unique fare and uncommon conversation to say nothing of the decor. If you do stop by, tell them I said hello and that they're always in my thoughts and prayers. For a diver's guide <laughs> okay. to underwater so five again. For food, press one. For drink, press two. The water is fine, but more adventurous tourists will surely be looking for stronger stuff. Move quickly along past any strangers with cheap bourbon flasks. You can get that hard times rot gut anywhere. If you're traveling by boat, You'll want the traditional seafarer's liquor. As it happens, there's a watering hole called the Rum Colony, wholly devoted to the stuff. You know, mixed with sugar and bright colors. I've heard it's excellent, but I never drink the stuff. I take my spirits clear. For a diver's okay. guide to underwater islands, press... I think we're at six, which will bring us For back. Well, let's see. Places, press two. For restless places, so we mentioned this elevation. They don't have names for things at this elevation. I think For it's we know we're in the cave system, the right? So at low elevations, underwater, under sea level elevations. Recommendations. Ooh. Press five. To return to the main menu, press six. To hear these options again, press zero. Welcome home for historical sites along so the Echo all River, that was one I think one. for a guide to the rivers flora and fauna oh my god this is <laughs> there's a lot of information here for, for different types of water press one oh. for the language of bats press two for insect interactions press three to return to the main menu press five. To hear these options again, press zero. The Echo River is best known for its plentiful waters. Not their volume, but their diversity. There's surface water, deep water, <laughs> big water, and small water. <laughs> what? Water that moves quickly. Slower water. Water in a cup. There's the water you know about, the water you don't know about, and the water you only assume exists due to indirect evidence, like a rumbling sound behind the rock. Oh, cool my God. water, but also warm, and even warmer. Water that gets things clean, water that only makes things dirtier, waters both soft and hard. Water in living bodies. If you come across any other kind of water, be very careful. Call us back and dial extension 0464 just to be safe. For different types of water, what about press rainwater? One. For the language of bats, press 2. Many find learning the language of bats to be intimidating but it's really pretty straightforward the most difficult part is getting your ultrasonic pronunciation right see bats have enormous complex ears for us it's more of a struggle here Let's try some useful phrases. Yes, Repeat let's do that. Me so All right. You can practice your pronunciation. Sounds good. Here's how you say, I don't know where I am. All right. Okay. Here's how 
Are Wait, I was gonna try it. Haven't we met before? I'm like spitting all over my microphone. <laughs> Great. And here's how you say, sorry, I must have left it in the boat. Right? Now, a very useful phrase. It's a shame we didn't record that. There you go. Every conversation has to end. So here's how to say, I will write that down in case I forget it later. Nice. For different types of water, press one. There's big For water and small bats, water and warm two. water and For warmer water. Interactions, press three. All right, insects. If you stop your boat somewhere cool, you may find yourself swarmed by insects. You may swat at them or cover your face, thinking they're all trying to bite you or buzz in your ear. But these insects are more interested in each other than they are in you. In fact, they've already forgotten you. They're back to chasing each other, breeding, competing over resources. Their minds are so shallow that while you've been standing there with your hands raised to your face, they've begun to think of you as part of the landscape, a funny-looking rock. This is what they sound like. Wow. I first thought he was going to make a sound with his voice, but clearly that's not the case. Ugh, I'm like getting itchy. Freaking mosquitoes. Ugh. The swarm! The swarm is coming! Oh, that's like right in your ear. Oh, I hate that. I used to have to work outside in like dense forests during the summers, June and July. Oh my god, absolutely the worst. Mosquitoes everywhere. I don't mind like the cricket sounds, like the like the nighttime insect sounds. That's actually really peaceful, or the evening. But man, those those mosquitoes and then the black flies and the horse flies. Oh man, I got a chunk taken out of my neck once. I, I actually screamed. Now that may not be surprising for those of you that watch my videos, I tend to make a lot of sounds. But I screamed. That hurt so badly. And I had a welt on the back of my neck for like a week and a half. It's gross. Yeah, I think this entire episode is going to be... Uh, on the speakerphone here, so yeah, visually this is stunning, you know, um, it's, like I said, it's nonsensical, fantastical, it's dreamy in a way, it's like, that kind of thing where you want to start listening and then you want to do all the options because you're like, how much info could they have possibly packed in this? Like, how long is this insect track gonna last? And you're just like, I could press a button and see, or I might, you know, just let it go. And then in the back of your mind, you're like, is this like on a loop? Am I going to sit here for 15 minutes before I realize that it's not going to end? Um, yeah, those are the, you know, it's what runs through my mind when I make these, when I make these videos and you get like this many options that seemingly never end. And I just kind of want to click that to see if it hangs up, but then I don't because, you know, there's more content to listen to, even though it has nothing to do with the story. <laughs> And it, uh, you know, really isn't providing us any more information. It's just kind of this thing that's like, why is this still happening? Why is it still happening? <laughs> ay, ay, ay. All right, I think it's dying down. Is it dying down? I don't know. Maybe not. What's this mute do? Mute should be on our side, right? Like, they can't hear me talk now? Okay, let's pause here. 
I don't know what any of these things. I used to have an old phone like not like this, but you know, with all these buttons. And I don't I don't know what pause, flash, or re well I know what redial does. Oh, it ended. For different types of Jesus water, Christ. press one. <laughs> for the language of bats, press two. Sugar achievement just listen to all that. Interactions. All right. Press three. That's four. To return ah, to the we're menu, done here. Press five. Five. Welcome home. For Thank you. Historical sites We've done that. The Echo River. Press one. We've done two. For a guide to the rivers flora and fauna. Press two. Now we're on three. For help identifying an unfamiliar sound. Press three. Oh my God, it's gonna be stupid. <laughs> if you're holding a snake right now. Press four. Press four. To hear these options again. Press zero. All right, three. Catalog of subterranean bird song. Press one. Oh lordy. For help identifying something that's happening in the dark. Press two. If you are hearing organ music. Press three. We heard that. To return to the main menu. Press five. In the Bureau of Reclaimed Spaces. To hear these options again. That's what it's called. Press zero. Now I play you several recordings. Of Oof. Echo River All right. Bird song. Buckle up, guys. And gals. Song, you want ladies. More about and lasses. And lads. At any time, you <laughs> and gentlemen. Oh. Press 5 to stop anytime. This is going to take forever. That was a bird.
All right, this is going okay. It's going forever. <laughs> Jesus. Subterranean bird song. Press one. It's like every bird in existence. Identifying something that's happening in the dark. Press two. The wet, rocky contours of the Echo River make for sometimes baffling reverberations that turn mundane sounds into weird, rattling symphonies. Like that. Oh. It can be a challenge to pick through the clamor and recognize even something as simple as water dropping in a metal bucket, especially in the dark. Here are some examples. When you hear a sound you want to know more about, just press one. At any time, you can press five to stop. Oh, Lordy. All right. And that was a canoe tipping over from several miles away. What? That was someone burning a phone book. Uh, someone chopping a tree. That was someone tearing up an electric bill. Oh. That is a subterranean bird. That is a subterranean motorcycle. That was a motorboat's propeller failing. Eh, close. That is someone dragging a pile of rolled quarters. That was dirt being thrown on the lid of a coffin. Hmm. That is someone cannonballing into water. That was a canoe tipping over ah. from several miles. Away. All right. For a catalog of subterranean bird song, press one. For help identifying something that's happening in the dark, press two. If you are hearing organ music, press three. Lucky you. Does it sound like this? Oh, my ears! <laughs> okay. This is kind of loud. Oh my god, it doesn't stop! <laughs>
Sorry, Stops there. That's the music you're hearing. Otherwise, press two. In that case, I don't know where it's coming from. The it's nice though, isn't it? Let's listen to it again. No, no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> what a flippin' troll. Damn it. <laughs> Uh. Oh my god. That was like a solid like three minutes of... This is making it unbearable, isn't it? <laughs> That bastard. Stop playing this. I can't stop. Uh. <laughs> I want to click this so bad, but I don't want this to... Well, I kind of want this to end, but, <laughs> but I don't, you know? But my god, this is... What is this? Can I break this one? Can I touch this? No. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> I don't want to accidentally, like, uh... Here, I'll switch hands. Hit that with the phone. Apologize to everyone. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm just gonna lightly nap here until this is done. I'm getting a little tired. You done? For a catalog of Jesus. subterranean <laughs> bird song, press one. For help identifying something that's happening in the dark, press two. If you are hearing organ music, press three. No. Oh. To return to the main menu, press five. To hear these options again, press zero. All right. Welcome home. For historical sites along the Echo River, press 1. For a guide to the river's flora and fauna, press 2. For help identifying an unfamiliar sound, press 3. If you're holding a snake right now, press 4. 4. So, you're probably not in any danger, but why are you holding that snake? If you're involved in an exchange of some kind, press 1. If holding the snake is part of your spiritual practice, press 2. If you don't remember why you're holding the snake, press 3. To return to the main menu, press 0. Take another look at your snake. Not a bad snake, is it? Yeah, it's really nice. You got a good one. Can you bear to see it go? What's the other party bring to this here swap? 
Press 1 if you still plan to go through with the trade. Press 2 if you're having second thoughts. Yeah, well, you're probably right. All right. Let's roll up our sleeves and get to work on this here snake situation. What you're going for is a kind of gestural conversation. Don't worry. I'll lead you two through it. Give that snake a name and look her right in the eyes and say her name. I'm going to go with Delia for the purpose of demonstration, but you pick a suitable name. Mabel. Try to follow along with me here to the best of your ability. Let's Delia. do it. Mabel. Take it easy now. Take it easy now. What if all of this is just a reflection of a reflection? What if all this is just now, a reflection of a reflection? Well, she processes that metaphysical curveball. All right. Okay. What's Delia up to now? If she's staring right back at you, press one. If she's wriggling around, press two. And if she's just kind of limp, press three. Oh, she's not limp. Good. Now you've got her attention. Now, leading with your shoulder, slowly tilt your body to the left, always maintaining eye contact. Adjust your feet as necessary. You want to do a full rotation over several seconds. It's normal to feel a bit self-conscious. Try not to get tangled up in the phone cord, or next time plan ahead and use a cordless. All right, where are we at? If the snake is breathing heavily, press 1. If she's curled around your forearm, press 2. If her tongue is extended, press 3. Let's do two this time. Okay, I want you to tense your arm muscles and then relax them one by one. Take slow, shallow breaths. Tense, relax, tense. Relax. Try to focus all your thoughts on that blood coursing through your arm veins. Forget Delia is even there. Just you and your blood. There you go. Delia should be in a kind of a calm, thoughtful state now, so you can move on. So, put that snake in some grass or something. Let oh. Delia be free like a snake should. And go ahead and wash your hands if you care to. <laughs> I would. All right. Cool. Thank Welcome you. Home. What? <laughs> For historical sites along the Echo River, press one. For a guide to the river's flora and fauna, press two. For help identifying an unfamiliar sound, press three. If you're holding a snake right now. Press four. To hear these options again, press zero. That's it. So what do we do? For historical sites along the Echo River, press one. For a guide to the river's flora and fauna, press two. Put down. For help identify. Bob, so where to? I can't believe we just did that. <laughs> and there's more. Uh, I could use a taco or something. I am starving. I had all that jerky. What? There's supposed to be a sort of flooding cave nearby. I could get into that. That makes no sense. Oh, Ben and Bob. Okay, yeah. Uh, we can grab some coffee at a gas station on the way. I think they charge admission. What? I'll spot you. It's probably free, though. Oh, the cave, you mean. You're an angel. Cool. Ready to go? I had these two extensions, and, uh... Let's try calling, if I can add an extension. How do I add an extension? to the 
Echo River for drifters and pilgrims. This guide is a public service provided by the Bureau of Secret Tourism. Press one. Is that all in one? If you have an extension yes. to dial, press nine. Nine. For more information about our organization, press three. Oh, there's that if too. If you don't remember dialing this number at all, press five. To hear these options, now is the time to dial an extension. Found some weird water, huh? Yeah. Right. We'd better catalog it. Hold the phone up to it for a bit, and we'll record it for later analysis. Press zero when you're done. <laughs> Welcome home. <laughs> Sites all right. along the Echo River. Press That's one. all it is, just recording. Put it down. For a Put guide it down. to the river's flora and fauna. Done. Cool, ready to go? Yeah, let's go. Chiba unlocked here and there along the Echo. What the hell was that? <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. All right, I did one of the two extensions. The other extension is seven three six zero. So if you're curious, you know, purchase the game, suffer through all that, and type seven three six zero. I guess you don't have to suffer through all that. You can just pick up the phone and press nine and do your extension. So next time we will start Act Four. Thank you for watching. If you made it this far. What is wrong with you? But I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye. -bye.